Shalom, it's Ginger, and I wanted to bring a message about who the Messiah is. The letter J is only about four or five hundred years old, so the name Jesus is not correct for the Messiah's name. If you look at the Paleo-Hebrew letters, you can uh, see the sounds that they make, and the Messiah's name is Yahusha. You can find this out by getting a copy of Hallelujah Scriptures, and in the back, there's a table with the he uh, Paleo Hebrew letters, and you can look at the sounds and see that his name says Yahusha. And so I call him by his Hebrew name, Yahusha. Okay, so uh, I want to find out, I want to share who he is. A lot of people don't think that we can bow before him. A lot of people don't think that he immerses with the, the Spirit. A lot of people don't think he is uh, a Nabi, or you say, um, prophet. I say Nabi. That's a Hebrew word for prophet. A lot of people don't think we should follow him, but all these things are untrue that these people have been saying because we can bow before him. He does immerse us with the Ruach. The Ruach is a Hebrew word for the spirit. He is a Nabi. He is a prophet, in other words, um, and he is the Savior and the Master, and we should follow him. So if we look in Mark 5:19. It says, go home to your friends and report to them what the master has done for you and how uh, he had compassion on you. So here we see that Yahusha is called the master. So we can call him the master as well as calling him by his name, Yahusha. We can put those together, Master Yahusha. Okay, and then uh, in, verse Matt, uh, in the verse um, Matthew 28 9 it says and as they were going to report to his Talmudim those are, or disciples see Yahusha met them saying greetings and they came and held him by the feet and bowed to him so we can bow before him um, it's okay to bow before him a lot of people are afraid to do that um, for whatever reason maybe they read a book that says you can only bow before Abba Father, Yah. If you read in Psalm 68, 4, you find out Abba Father's name is Yah, Y-A-H. It means I am. So, but we can bow before Yahusha. And it says, um, uh, we can learn about how he immerses us in the Ruach by reading Mark 1, 8. It says, Yahusha immerses us in the Ruach. I mean, it says, um, I'm sorry, it says, I indeed immerse you in water, but he shall immerse you in the Ruach HaKodesh. So, here we find out that he will fill us with the Spirit. We can ask him to fill us with his Spirit, and we should ask him that. Um, Yahushua was a Nabi, or a prophet. Mark 6, 4 says, And Yahushua said to them, A Nabi is not unappreciated except in his own country. So a lot of times when we try to witness to our family in our own a town or whatnot, a lot of times they don't accept us because they know all our weaknesses that we have and a lot of times they don't want to hear from us because they know all the mistakes we've made but you tell a stranger or a neighbor that you've been loving and witnessing to and they're more open to it. Okay, Mark 1 11, and a voice came out of Shemayim, that's the Hebrew word for heaven, you are my Ben, the beloved in whom I delight. So um, it's talking about the, that word Ben is the Hebrew word for son. So it says, And a voice came out of Shemiam, You are my Ben, or son, the beloved in whom I delight. So he is the beloved. The Messiah, the Master, is the beloved. He is beloved. And Yahushua said to them, Come, follow me, and I shall make you become fishers of men. This is Mark 1, 17. So we are to follow Yahushua. A lot of people are afraid to follow Yahushua. A lot of the Hebrew Israelites only go by the Old Covenant instead of the Messianic writings or the as it's called by many the New Testament but we are to go by the New Covenant the Renewed Covenant um, it says and Yahushua said to them come follow me so we are to follow what Yahushua said the Messiah said and um, you can find his words all over Matthew Mark Luke and John just read read it and follow Mark 1 25 talks about how Yahushua cast out spirits so he could cast out evil spirits and they left and it was uh, something that he gave authority to his disciples to do also so we can do that in his name okay so we don't want to be ashamed of him because in Mark 8 38 says if we're ashamed of Yahushua he will be ashamed of us um, and then it's good to read uh, Mark 1 41 through 42 and Mark 8 25 talks about how Yahushua healed the sick 
And Mark 9, 7 talks about how Yahuwah tells us to hear Yahusha. So Abba Father wants us to hear his son. It's his idea that we hear his son. So don't be afraid to hear him. A lot of people are terrified to hear um, Yahusha because they think that you can only hear from Abba Father. But we should hear from the son. We should obey his words and follow him. If you want to see how often he taught, you can see in Mark 2, 2, Mark 2, 13, Mark 4, 2, Mark 4, 33, just continually talks about how Yahusha taught. He taught the people. Our life is saved due losing our life in Yahusha. Read uh, Mark 8, 35, for whoever desires to save his life shall lose it. So we want to lose our life in Yahusha. We don't want to keep our own ideas and our own ways. We want his um, wonderful life living in us. Yahushua could and does forgive us. He forgives our sin. Read Mark 2, 5. He has the authority to forgive sin. Yahushua blessed the bread. So um, you can read that in Mark 6, 14. We also should pray over um, our food. And if we uh, take the bread and the cup, the, the juice, or some take wine, um, to remember him, um, you should ask his blessing on it. Remember him and ask for forgiveness before you do that. Make sure your heart is clean before him. Okay, it says in Mark 9, 37, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. This is Yahushua talking. So we need to receive Yahushua. If you receive Yahushua, you receive the Father because the Father sent Yahushua. Mark 9, 37, you can read that in. Yahushua calls us to repentance. Read Mark 2, 17. He wants us to turn away from our sin. That means to completely turn away from it. Turn 180 degrees away from it. Just stop. A lot of people think, oh, I'm just waiting around for uh, the Messiah to do everything. Well, he wants us to choose to follow him. Mark 8, 31. And he began to teach them. And the Ben of Adam, that's the son of Adam, has to suffer much and be rejected by the elders and chief Kohenan and scribes and be killed and after three days to rise again. So he was killed, Yahushua, on the execution pole. He died like this, straight up. He did not die, uh, as it's many think, with his arms, uh, you know, outstretched from my understanding, the Hebrew says stake or pole or execution pole. So that uh, appears to me that he died with his arms straight up. Anyway, um, I'm not arguing over it. It's just uh, something that I've studied. So I wanted to point out that in this verse, Mark 8, 31, it talks about how he will be killed and three days, and after three days, rise again. So he was risen three days after his death. He's not still dead. He's alive. Yahushua is master of the Sabbath and wants us to do good on the Sabbath. So some people think you can just sit in the middle of the room and barely move all day. But no, you, even though we don't want to buy or sell on the Sabbath, it is a day of rest, but we can do good. We can pray for people. We can get together in fellowship. There are lots of good things you can do, but don't exchange money on that day. Power, it, there is power in the name of Messiah. You can see that in Mark 9, 39. And if we do Yahushua's desire, he is our brother, our elder brother. Mark 3, 35 talks about how if we do his desire, we are his, you know, his mother, his sister, his brother, and whatnot. Yahushua blesses the children. You can read about that in Mark 10, 16. We also ought to love children, accept them, and be kind to them and loving. Yahushua tells us to believe upon him, Mark 5, 36. And in Mark 9, 9, we find out that he is risen. You can find out that Yahushua is called master for one of his titles in Mark 16 and 20. Um, and, we're, and Yahushua tells us to keep the commandments in Mark 10, 19. We ought to keep the Ten Commandments. They're still in effect. He told the rich man to keep the commandments when he was asked how to enter eternal life. Follow him, keep the commandments. And then he said, I do, I've kept those. And then he says, sell all you have and give to the poor. And that's when the rich man went away sad. And we don't want to be like that. If you know, We need to give to the poor. We need to keep the commandments. Don't go away sad. Be happy that you can give to the poor. Be happy to give. In Mark 10, 40, Yahushua will sit on a throne and someone will sit next to him. Now I'm, now, I'm totally paraphrasing. I'm not quoting this. I'm just talking about what this verse is talking about. And um, so on his right and on his left, no one will know 
um, right now on earth who that will be. So that's kind of a mystery right now. But um, Yahushua will sit on his throne. And so we don't know who will be on his right or his left. It's not for us to know that right now. Yahushua came to serve, Mark 10, 45. We also ought to serve. He had authority to drive out the money changers in the mikdash, in the temple. So he, he said his house was a house, was a house of prayer, Mark 11, um, verse 15 through 17. We ought to pray. A lot of these churches, uh, I call them circuses because they're like a circus. Um, they just... Uh, they're all about money, and they're all about selling, and, uh, you know, it's all about collecting the tithe, the tithe, the tithe, and they're misusing the tithe many times. They're not giving to the poor. Did you know that the tithe was to go to the poor primarily? Probably 90% of it was supposed to go to the poor. Uh, of course, a small portion could go to the minister of, of the good news of the gospel so that they could, uh, of course, eat. They need to eat also, but... Um, it's so backwards in most of these congregations today. You see a very minuscule amount, a very small amount going to the poor, maybe 5% or less going to the poor, and the rest is going in the pastor's pocket or his suits or his Bentley car payment or his cushy seats or the new pavement or the new paint or whatnot for the, for the, uh, the building or whatnot. And that's backwards. We have that all wrong. We should give to the poor, mostly to the poor. It's all through the new... The renewed covenant, you see that. Yahushua tells us to have belief in Elohim, Mark eleven twenty two. So we should believe in Elohim, Yahuwah. And that's the Father's full true name. You can see that in the preface of most Bibles. They admit to removing his name. That was a sin to remove his name. And Yahuwah answered him, The first of all the commands is, Hear, O Yisrael, Yahuwah our Elohim, Yahuwah is one. Now, that's a mystery. A lot of people don't understand that at all, and I don't claim to know every little aspect of that, but it says Yahuwah is one. So, Yahuwah is one. Does that mean that Yahushua does not exist? No, that doesn't mean Yahushua doesn't exist. Um, Yahushua does exist. Yahushua is the son of Elohim, of Yah Yahuwah. Yahushua tells us the Ruach speaks. Now, a lot of people just think the Ruach is just that, some sort of power. But he actually speaks the Ruach, the Spirit. And you can read this in Mark 13, 11. So that's interesting because um, there's a whole lot of people out there saying that the Ruach, they kind of make it out that he's just, um, just the power, which you don't want to just limit that to his power. He speaks to to us. He guides us. He's the umpire to us, the spirit. Yahushua admits he is the sovereign of the Yehudim. You can read that in Mark. So he is the sovereign. He admits to being the sovereign of his people. He is sovereign. He is um, uh, the exact representation of the Father. You can read that in First Peter. If we endure to the end, Yahushua said we will be saved. We need to endure and guard his word, guard his commands, be loving him. He said, if you if you love me, keep my commands. So we are saved by favor through faith in Yahushua, period. If you sincerely call out to him, rely on him, period, you're saved. But after that, we should go on to loving him and obeying him. Immediately begin to love him and obey him. If you love me, keep my commandments, Yahushua says. Okay, so um, going on to Mark 13, 26. And then they shall see the Ben, or the son of Adam, coming in the clouds with much power and esteem. A lot of people don't realize that Yahushua is coming on the clouds. They don't believe that. They think it's a false doctrine or something. But it's in the Word. He's coming on the clouds, and every eye will see him. Yahushua tells us to cast out demons in his name, and to speak with renewed tongue, and to lay hands on the sick. You can see all this in Mark 16, 17 through 18. So are you casting out demons? Are you speaking this in his name? You can do that, even if your children are acting like they're having oppression from the enemy. Cast those demons off of them in the mighty name of Yahushua. And uh, speak with renewed tongue. Ask to be filled with the Ruach. Ask for that spirit language, that renewed tongue. Um, don't be afraid of that. He will not give you a snake. He'll give you what you ask for when you ask for the spirit. He will not trick you. Okay, Yahushua's word will never pass away, Mark 13, 31. It will always last. Yahushua's word. It said Yahushua's word will never pass away. Yahushua says he will sit at the right hand of the Almighty, Mark 14 and 62. So Yahushua will be at the right hand of the Almighty and is. So um, now we're going on to Mark 14, 6 to 7. It, it just, I'm paraphrasing, it talks about how we're to do good to Yahushua. So 
when we obey him, that is doing good to him. Yahushua tells us to proclaim the good news in Mark 16, 15. Are you proclaiming the good news? Are you sharing it? You can share it on YouTube. You can share it with your neighbors. Wherever you go, you can shine your light. Live the life. Love people. Yahushua calls himself the teacher in Mark 14, 14. Now, I'm not supposed to go around saying I'm the teacher or the rabbi or whatnot. Or other people are not to call themselves the rabbi and whatnot. We share. We're to share the word. We can teach and share without calling ourselves the teacher. Okay, he is the teacher, Yahushua is. Yahushua said in Mark 14, 24, And he said to them, This is my blood, that, I, that of the renewed covenant, which is shed for many. He shed his blood to save us. Mark 16, 6 tells us that he was risen. And Mark 14, 28 talks about how Yahushua tells us that he would rise again. Okay, so um, in 1 John 1 John 2, 1, it talks about how we have an intercessor with the Father in Yahushua. He is our intercessor. Okay? That he's praying. He is praying for us. He's praying for us. Yahushua is the atoning offering. And we when we pray through his name, we get to the Father. Yahushua is the atoning offering for our sins. When he died on the execution pole, he was going as the sinless sacrifice totally sinless on the execution pole to take our sin away. The one confessing the Ben has the Father as well. So that Ben, again, is the Son. So the one confessing the Son has a Father as well. So if you confess Yahushua, you have the Father as well. A lot of these Hebrew Israelites do not want anything to do with Yahushua. I had somebody recently on Facebook call Yahushua a faggot, and I had to delete him. So, uh, you know, he claimed to, you know, he knew the true name of Yahuwah, but he refused the Messiah. And we can't be like that. It says in 1 John 2, 23, the one confessing the Ben or the one confessing the Son has the Father as well. So if you want the Father, you must confess the Son. Yahushua came to take away the sins, for in him is no sin. I'm paraphrasing. 1 John 3 and 5. So he takes away our sin. He takes away our sin. We don't take our, you know, we can't cleanse uh, our own life. We can't come to the Father just because we're good. We have to have His cleansing because He was perfect and blameless, the Messiah was. In 1 John 3.23, and this is His command, that we should believe in the name of His Son or the name of His Ben, Yahushua HaMashiach, and love one another as He gave us commands. So we are to believe in the name of Yahuwah. I mean, of Yahusha and Yahuwah. But this verse specifically is talking about the name of Yahusha. We are to believe in the name. So are you believing in the name? First John 4, 3. And every spirit that doesn't confess Yahusha HaMashiach has come in the flesh is not of Elohim. You have to believe that he died in the flesh on the execution pole for your sins. Okay? You can't just think about him or hope that he's in you. You have to confess him and accept him. Second Johanna one three favor compassion peace be with you from Yahuwah the Father and from the Master Yahusha. So you clearly see that there is a Father and there is a Son. There's a Father Yahuwah and there's the Son, the Master Yahusha. Okay, the rest of the verse says from the Master Yahusha Hamashiach. That's the Hebrew for Messiah. The Ben of the Father or the Son of the Father. So thank you for listening. Shalom.